um, you will have to excuse the way my question paper looks here, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, so the first question, 9.1.1, is saying that uh, let's name the component in this generator that ensures that the induced current in the external circuit is in one direction only. Name the component in this generator that ensures that the induced current in the external circuit is in one direction only. Uh, that is the split ring that we have here, right? So 9.1.1, we have split uh, ring. Now let's do 9.2.2. Oh, 9.1.2. 9.1.2 saying that is the direction of the induced current from X to Y or from Y to X, right? Uh, I will let one of you let me know in the comment and then I will pin that uh, comment, right? So please uh, leave a comment there and let me know whether the induced current is flowing from X to Y or from Y to X and why you are saying so, right? Now let's do 9.1.3. So now 9.1.3 is saying that a maximum voltage of 90 volts is generated when the coil is rotating at a frequency of 20 hertz. Let's write down the time taken for the coil to complete one rotation. So we have frequency being equals to 1 divided by the period, right? Grade 10. So if we rearrange this formula, we should get uh, the period being equal to 1 divided by the frequency. So this should be 1 divided by 20. And if I put that in my calculator, I'm getting 0 0.05 uh, seconds, right? So that is the time taken for the coil to complete uh, one rotation. Uh, let's move to the next question 9.1.4. So 9.1.4 is saying that uh, the coil starts rotating from the initial position as shown uh, in the diagram above. Sketch a graph of uh, output voltage current versus time for one complete rotation of the coil. Indicate the maximum voltage and the relevant time values on the graph. So let's uh, sketch our axis here and see what we have. So we have our Y and we have our X. So on the X, we have time in seconds. And then on our Y, uh, we have voltage in volts, right? So we can just uh, leave that like that then. So uh, we only want one complete rotation. So this is dc right so we shouldn't see anything like this manner because it's dc it should look like this right so uh, we change direction we go up again and we have one complete cycle so this time here uh, should be 0 0.05 right because in 9.1.3 we say that uh, it takes 0 0.05 seconds to complete uh, one rotation, right? Uh, what else do we have to indicate here? Uh, we must indicate uh, the maximum voltage. We must indicate the maximum voltage. So on the y-axis here, we're gonna write how uh, the maximum voltage voltage is 90 volts, right? So we're gonna have 90 volts here. Uh, so this 90 volts will be in line uh, with the with that part there, just like I show you with my line. You can see my graph is a bit, you know, sloping up, but yeah, it should be a straight line. And then 9.2, the last question, uh, the wall sockets supply RMS voltage and current. Okay, a 220 volts AC voltage is supplied from a wall socket to an electrical having a resistance of 32 uh, ohms. Let's calculate the average energy dissipated by the kettle in two minutes. So we have uh, the power being equal to the work divided by the time, right? If you want to find the energy dissipated, you say the work equals to the power multiplied by the time. So the power can take uh, different forms, right? Uh, depending on what you have. Here we have the voltage and the resistance. So the power will take the form P is equal to V squared divided by R, right? So the energy dissipated will be be v squared divided by r multiplied by delta time so what is v v is 220 volts so we square that r is 32 and then the change in time is 
What is the change in time? Change in time is two minutes, so we have two multiplied by 60. Now, uh, if I put that in my concrete, so I have 220 squared divided by 32, multiplied by 120, and I'm getting um, 181,500 uh, um, joules.